And it is in pole, Dario Balestri. Oh, hang on a second. So for the European Championship A final here, 2019 from France in pole, Dario Balestri from Italy. Second, it's Simon Kirschbrook, the reigning champion from Switzerland. Third, Alessio Mazzeo from Italy. Fourth, Rob Priech from Germany. Fifth, is Francesco Hesco Tironi from Italy. Sixth, Robin de Hont, the Belgian ex-European champion. Dominic Greiner, ex-world champion at one tenth, is from Germany and starts seven. His fellow German, Tony Gruber, starts eighth. Carl Morello from Italy is ninth, and Gilles Grosscamp brings up the rear in tenth position. So um, that's all. So that's the grid, anyway. All cars back into the pits again for the main final. So it doesn't look like anyone's called a timeout, so it looks like they might actually be starting, which is good news. So it's time to say thank you to our sponsors, Infinity and A Main. Just time for Ash to rush out, mate. And Ephra. So, Balestri will start on pole. Simon Kurzbach second. Alessia Malezio with Alessia Mazzeo will be third. Rob Pietsch will be fourth. Francesca Tironi fifth. Robin Dehont is sixth. Dominic Greiner is seventh. Tommy Gruber is eighth. Carmariola is in nine. Grosskamp is in ten. For the European Championship A final 2019. We are underway now. And there's a clean start from everyone, and there's an immediate battle between Balestre and Kurzbuch. Balestre in the white car, Kurzbuch in the uh, orange and yellow machine. They fire themselves away and into the first corner. So it's one, two, three, four, six. So the first the person to lose out is a five car of Tironi. Hont moved up one place. And immediately, Balestra beginning to stretch out a lead from Kurzbuch as they funnel through the chicane. So it is a nice lead for Balestra. Second place is Kurzbuch. Third place is Mazzeo. Fourth is Peach. And then Ont. So the battle we're looking at the moment is for second and third. The multiple coloured car, well, it's got two colours. It's orange and yellow of Kurzbuch fending off the attention of Alessio Mazzeo. But don't forget, out ahead and pulling away is Dario Balestra. We've seen this before, actually, and often it's ending in tears of, an act of, a, of a breakdown, but he's getting away nicely, and these two are causing a bit of a car with Peach behind them in the greyish-blue car. So second place, Kurzbuch. Again, that time round, dropped three tenths of a second to Balestra in the lead. So the Swiss driver looking to catch him up, but at the moment, away goes Balestra, the current European, sorry, the current world champion leading the current European champion. He's there from Peach. And then we have Grosskamp's a big move. They've gone from 10th to 6th in the first uh, four laps. So good work from the Dutchman. That time round. 16 play 15. So it's the first time actually there of a, a slight ease back of the lead by Simon Kurz, only a tenth of a second. And very much now we've got a leader, a second, and they're gapping the rest of the field. So let's drop back one to third, which is a lesson to say. He's got Pietsch really pushing him hard. And behind Pietsch, it's Dominic Greiner. Greiner, who won the other semi-final, but so way down because it was a one the second semi-final, but way down because it was a much slower race. The white car is his own third. Behind him is the light blue or light bluey grey machine of Rob Pietsch, the 2010-2012 champion is Mugen. He's out with the X-ray and they are getting quite close as they flick flack through the chicane and now around the A main turn before they come to the broadcasting hairpin and power up the straight before they sweep to the right and then tight into the F returns. 
At the front, the lead now 1.8 seconds for Bolestri from Kersbush. That time round, both did 15 nines. Greiner looking to move forward to so the meat and the sandwich is Piech. Just to drop back one to Piech because he's got a, may have a, an issue with his uh, fellow German, Dominic Greiner, in, uh, quite soon. So Greiner, hoping for a good race. It's not maximum BS, obviously. And uh, gained a little time there coming into the sharp, sharp, ever sharpening uh, turn one. That's turn two, I suppose, really, if you're numbering in an American way. So the lead is now 2.1 seconds. Balestra getting quicker and quicker and quicker. Well, look at Griner right at the, the backside. Griner very, very quick at the second part of that opening corner. And I can't always convert it into anything because it's a very difficult track to overtake on. Now, Gain here, coming around here, is sweeping by the second part. Look, gain, 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 gain. This time didn't have to ease off too much. This is the battle, so it's fourth and fifth. The other top three are all gapping themselves, so actually it was a good lap last time round. Balestra said, oh, Balestra's a problem. Balestra's dropped into second place, and so somehow, off camera, Balestra's done what he can. He's come off the track and he's dropped to second. So what we need to do is identify how that's happened. Yeah, so let's move forward to Balestra. He's about to go to the start-finish line now, and he is the white car who's not gone in the pits. Kurzbach stopped the pits. Balestra had a problem. I can't believe he stopped in four seconds. So uh, I don't think it was a stop off line, that's far too quick. But he had a problem, lost four seconds on the lap, dropped in the second. He now leads, of course, as Kerbich which has pitted exactly on four. And now, will he, where will he come out? That's Murrah, the world famous mechanic, who mechanic Andy Moore to World Championship victory in 2006 for the uh, Touring Car Champion Electrics. And Balestre recovers from that problem, but his two-second lead has disappeared, and he now will begin a battle with Kurzbach over the next three and a half minutes for the next fuel stop. Kurzbach just ahead of him, your Swiss reigning European champion, and in the white car, the Infinity chassis, is Dario Balestre, your reigning world champion of World Championship One, just up the road here from here, uh, well, nearly two years ago. So Kurzbach that time round was actually 500 seconds faster. And it looks like the initial speed has settled down. And it edged back by 800 a second to Balestri. Now what's also quite notable is Museo and the Griner aren't being dropped. And the top four cars are covered by a grand total of three seconds. Balestri, every time you see at the top of the shot, you'll be seeing that's, the, that's his target. That is Simon Kurzbach. Unfortunately, he missed his little arrow, which cost him four seconds, just prior to the pit stops. But here we go, picking up the pieces. The Italian needs to cut down the Swiss driver, who is nothing if not relentless. It's almost Swiss precision against Italian flair when you come to this racing. As they flick flack through the chicane again. And the pace is relentless, but no one has is yet to be lapped. Robin de Haunt running in last. But he isn't massively behind. Obviously, I don't think he's going to win, but he's uh, not being dropped. So the first two now, just edging closer, Balestri. He gained a tenth here and a tenth there, and this time he's noticeably closer after a good run through the chicane. And fires up the straight, first and second in the same shot. It's a three-tenth gain. It's actually a drop, more by a drop by a Kersbrook than going by Balestri. The Balestri's issue he's got is that one thing we do know is that getting past this circuit is not easy. And if anything, I think he dropped back a little bit that time. Yep, 16-1 to 16-3, so a two-tenth gain for Balestri. Balestri's got another problem, that Mazzeo, that's what I'm saying, his Italian compatriot, is beginning to bridge the gap and might make it a 1-2-3, and he's pulling Griner with him, so it could be 1-2-3-4. Peach a little bit dropped at the moment in fifth. And that was a minor error coming through the tightening part of the first corner before it becomes the effort for section, and that lost... Simon Kurzbach in the yellow and orange Shepherd car, enough space to let the white infinity of Dario Balestri gain, 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 and he picked up about a tenth of a second there. And they are now as close as they can really get and still be racing because an, effectively you start attracting the same piece of track and therefore you can't both occupy at the same time. Now, Balestri's got a major issue now. If he can't get past a pit stop, how is he going to get past? Because Kurzbach can run the line. Look at that. Even though he lost a bit of the rear end there, he can run the line. And this is a single line track. Oh, there 
Yeah, he, just, he thought about going up the inside, Balestra. But Kurzbuch knows what he's doing. You feel in free air that Balestra will be slightly quicker as he nibbles at the rear of the uh, Swiss European champion. But the speeds they're doing, it's precision dancing, they're balancing the grip of the cars. And again, he's just got so much extra turning and at the end of that sharpening, ever sharpening first corner, but he can't do a lot with it because Kurzweil can plant his car in the correct part of the corner. And in fact, almost gains that because he kind of defeats the uh, momentum. Stay with Balestra and see what, because this is his chance now. Can he go really, 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 really quickly for two laps and therefore effectively do what's coming on in F1 terms as the overcut where he gets it by being faster whilst he's not stopping. So he was a lap longer last time, so he's going to be two laps longer. I'm not sure. This, will this, at the end of the day, this extra couple of laps, enable him to... Someone stop, don't know who it is. Uh, enable him to gain enough time to get past Kurzweil. Any part of the track. Okay, so they put down. Mura pick up the car. Fuel goes in. Oh, it's a bit of a busy pit lane. It's not... Oh, it's a slow stop. It's a slow stop. I think, I think he's flamed. Very slow stop there in another car. Two cars are flamed, so this is hot weather. It must, it's a very quick flame, but I think that Balestri flamed there. We'll wait, we'll take him until he gets across the line and see what the time was, but that obviously was a problematic pit stop there after 10 minutes of running. It's not all over, unless he does it again at every stop. And Balestri did a 27, yeah, so he lost five seconds, and he's dropped down to a net fifth. Now, in the lead, uh, on an alternate strategy at the moment, is Jules Grosskamp. So, though he's now not in the lead because he's, he's actually stopped for fuel at this point. So Kurzweil picks up the lead. So let's pick up our leader. Yellow and orange just coming into Infinity Hairpin now. That's Kurzweil back in the lead. Second place is Alesso Mazzeo, who is back by about a second point seven. This is your leader. Let's drop back one car. Ash, and that is the second place man of Italian Alessa Mazzeo. Behind him is third place. All right, Peach. Now, Balestri's on a charge back. He's managed to get past Perola and Groskamp and up into fourth. But this is second. This is Mazzeo. And then Balestri's been repassed by Carmen Marola, so that's not going to help him. Still a long, long way to go here, 34 minutes, maybe 11 minutes, 11 minutes down, but, less than, but basically we're a quarter of the way through the race. Kurzweil holding a 1.8 second lead over this man, Alessio Mazzeo. Pete is back a further 2.8 seconds. Raiola 1.1 behind that, and Balestri a second behind that. So Balestri got past Raiola briefly, it's now fallen back behind him again. And Kurzbuch having a quite a, an easy run of it after that flame-out issue during the stop. Francesco Tironi was the car that stopped on the track and lost three laps. And he will now not be a European champion this year. Tommy Griner must have had a problem in his pit stop as well because he's fallen way, way down. So Griner, who's doing really, really well now, has fallen down right to the back of the cars who haven't had a an issue. So Mazzeo continues to drop back one car to well, Piech. And the, that's it, that's the Piech car. So sort of the light grey car. It doesn't show up very well against the track, does it? Surprised he can actually see it himself. So, with 12 minutes down, it's all looking particularly good news for but she's got about a no, there's a 1.1 second lead, 1.9 second lead on Mazzeo. Mazzeo has a 1.5 second lead on Pietsch. Yeah, Balestri's got himself back past Carmarola. I think he's on a very different fuel strategy. But he is now something in the region of seven seconds off the lead. So a great start. He's going well, fell off slightly, and then had the flame out. So it's not been a perfect start for Balestri. Kurzweil, on the other hand, probably quite pleased with Piech coming to fuel as he saw there being put down Kurzweil ahead of him. So Piech comes back out again. 
This is probably the period where we see people like Gross Camp, who's on a different strategy, move to the front or move further forward. And all to wait for these staggers to unwind. There's Alessio Mazzeo now, who's running more laps than Kurzwitz takes the lead. Celestri is running more laps than Kurzwitz moves into third. And the guy we're with, um, or at pH drops to fifth due to the, uh, the stagger of the pit stops. Now, what has happened is Balestri is running a lot longer. And the interesting thing is he's not that far behind the shepherd of Kurz, but which means that when he, when they, if he does manage to save a stop during the course this time, I'm just going to... Yep, this time he doesn't flame, so stand and stop for Balestri. Drops back behind Piech. So Kurzbutch will now be leading from Mazeo. Piech will drop up a couple of places as the stagger of the various pit stops unwind. And we are in a very much an interim situation, interim situation here. For example, Carmen Rowe is running a quite a different pit stop strategy, and that's pinging him quite high up now into third place. So we can... Look at where it's a peach now comes round. He's three seconds of Rayola should be between the two of them. So move forward one car, Ash. It's the second of the white cars going up. Well, the third, actually, the white cars at the top of the corner now. That's it. So the white car, and that is Carmen Rayola enjoying a slightly different uh, experience whilst he's on a different pit stop strategy. The biggest problem is that because of the, obviously the demands of this track, we have a great number of pure white bodies with stickers on. Um, obviously the only available can of rattle can was white and they all put, sprayed up their new bodies on Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday and all went with white. So we have several cars who are playing white and very few cars, well, not fewer than normal cars, wearing their race paint colours. In fact, there's three white cars in a row came past me now, which is Mazeo. Um, Riola and Balestri, who are actually second, third, and fourth at the moment, and they're all in white cars. So one of them, I think, rather conveniently waiting for a pit stop at that point. And it's the man we were following, Riola. So he's stopping on five. So he has a pit stop in hand. Balestri moves back up to third, and five seconds off Kersbridge. Peach just seems to have dropped right off the pace in this last couple of seconds, so Peach may have had a problem. But he's off the pace. Griner's had a problem. He's missing. Terrain we know has had a problem before. And so, I think that might be the Griner car that's uh, being covered. Yep, we've lost Dominic Griner. So, moving back to the front of the field. Let's find our leader with Orange. He's going around the uh, A main turn now. Orange and Yellow about to put a lap on Robert Piech, having already put a lap on Robin Don. So Piech has obviously had a problem um, and has lost quite a bit of time. And he will now soon be lapped by the leader, Simon Kersbush. Kersbush lead over Alessio Mazzeo, though, is a car. And that car is Robin Don but only in time terms, 1.8 seconds, and Balestre a further 4-3. So Balestre is gaining on Kersbridge, and I think that at some point, we'll take Kersbridge through his pit stop, I think that Kersbridge is going to have to make an extra stop. So this is not all done and dusty with 28 minutes to go, but it will, of course, require Balestre not to have those two problems he had early on, one falling off a track, and secondly, a flame out during his second pit stop. So Kersbridge will rejoin in third. With Mazea, who's on a slightly different strategy, like two laps longer. And as he could wait, he's going in fourth place, Kersbridge. Um, and Mazea, who is, say, two or three laps. And Balestri is like, at this point, we get four laps longer. He's running a lap longer per stop. As other cars fly out of the pit, and uh, oh, that was very polite indeed. Oh, it's PH, that's why it's PH letting through. Sorry, I thought that was going to be. Uh, um, Rayla, Rayla didn't let him through, uh, stopped. Rayla is a good few yards ahead, actually. So Carmine, starting ninth, he's ahead of Kersbutch by about 1.3 seconds. 
Well, Lester leads again, but it's not a real lead. Saying that, it's not a fake lead either, which makes, I know, makes very sense. I think it actually comes in now. So if Lester comes in, he's had a good four minutes. He started up well again, so he's had a good run. That's been a good section of the race for Balestre. And he'll come out again. Effectively now, I think a pit stop in hand he will have over the course of the next 27 minutes. As Kurzbrits now comes over in second place with a very, very long running Raiola ahead of him and leading. I've no idea how that's going to uh, wind out as problem for the eight car of Tony Gruber as well now, but no, it blow us. So Kurzbrits has a couple of seconds on Mazea. Now the question really is, is Blesley yeah, is right behind Mazea now. So let's, um, let's drop back to the Mazeo and, uh, oh dear, it's all going, basically it's down at the uh, broadcast hairpin now, that first white car, the three, that is Mazeo. Now, it was a difficult lap just then for Balestra, because he got involved in all sorts of other cars, lost about a second, so they were getting confused, just passed here in the infinity hairpin. But if you look now, it is Balestra who is the next car behind Mazeo. Mazeo running uh, in third. Balestra fourth. Raiola's leading this thing, and I'm not overly sure that's a, that could well be a genuine lead because of his fuel strategy. So Raiola has played him played a bit of a blinder here as Carmen. And yeah, I think he's actually genuinely doing what he's doing. He's kind of fuel this time, so he's dropped back down. Kurzweil takes the lead. Mazeo comes in second. Balestra will be third. And he's actually back to having the three white cars together. So Raiola with a full tank of fuel is right behind the other two. So this is a genuine position for him. He's in between the two. He's managed to actually come out in between Balestra and Mazzella. So second, third and fourth, white, white and white, well done boys, are running together. Second is Mazzella, third is Riola, and fourth is Balestra. So it's three Italians, three white body shells, and that's really great. But there's a bit of a black tip to the wing of the uh, Mazzello car. And Raiola, in the middle, so Raiola has a black tip to win, is the person who might even be in the box seats due to his fuel strategy. And this is why I love these long-running IC finals, because suddenly you have strategy. Suddenly it's all about, it's not just about pace, it's about tyre wear, it's about fuel stops, it's about pacing yourself, it's about being fast at the right type of the race. And obviously also avoiding the uh, potential mechanical disasters of flame out. Now, Kurzweil has a healthy lead over Mazeo of what is now almost four seconds. That is a good lead. However, other cars behind him are in different fuel strategies. It's not quite as good lead. This has been a good couple of seconds, a good couple of runs from the uh, for Kurz, which is pulling out on these three a little bit. They've had some traffic issues and they've been tripping over themselves as well. Balestri doesn't seem to be able to move. Move back one car. And that is the Conrado car. Now, Balestri is all over his backside as he goes through the Infinity Hairpin. But doesn't have the, the methodology of getting past him. And what's happening at the moment is actually giving Kurzweil a chance to pull away as these three are scrapping. So Kurzweil's making the hay while the sun shines as Balestra takes a far too much curb in an attempt to get past and drops off the back again. And these three Italians are hurting their country's challenge and allowing the Swiss driver to get away. So Kurzweil has stopped now. So Kurzweil stops. And at this point, he then drops back down uh, to, oh, Kurzweil, a bad stop. Kurzweil, a bad stop for Kurzweil. He stopped and he's had a 30-second stop, which sounds like he may well have flamed as well. So that throws it all back open again. So Kurzweil has dropped back down nine seconds, and you can see him uh, running in, in class as fifth. When the fuel stops unwind, he's not going to be much higher than third. So Kurzweil, with a, something on the pit stop there, I assume a, it's such a short problem. It must have been a quick flame and get going again. Unless uh, Mazeo is having a problem as well. As we go through another round. So Comorello leads. Balestri is second. Crosscamp is third. And we have your leader here. This is Raiola leading. And it's all about fuel strategy here. That, 40, that very short run time something they're getting is giving huge advantages. As Balestri comes in. And Riola's still going, oh, bless his, oh, bless his flame. To get, no, bless his tyre change. Right, so full tyre change now for one of the cars. That's not Balestra. That is the Riola car and a full tyre change. Break there. Now, that might explain Kurzweil's long stop. Kurzweil's long stop must have been a tyre change. So he didn't see it, but Kurzweil's done a four tyre change on the last stop. 
So that is why he did a 30, despite having it being no time. So that was a very swift stop. Riola's four tyre change, 31-6. Balestri leads. So that was the mystery answer. I didn't see the uh, Kurzweil stop. It was a tyre change, which is why he was a 30-seconder. So Balestri now leads. Let's pick up our leader because he is coming through the A main curve now, another one of the white cars, and he's the second of those two white cars, Balestri. And he leads, but it's very difficult to tell where everyone is as we hit the halfway mark in relation to everyone else. Can Balestri one on one set of tyres? It seems unlikely, those are changing, but if you're going to change, the like time to change is at halfway. If you're not going to change, you back it off. Currently, quite a bit quicker on these old tyres than Kerbs on these new tyres. It's four tenths quicker last time. So Balestri has had a very eventful 23 minutes so far as he completes another lap and goes past the broadcast hairpin. Rayla in third with a full tyre change and three seconds behind uh, Kerbs. Mizeo in fourth. Crosscamp fifth. Four of those cars are white. I thank heavens for uh, Simon Kurzweil knowing what body shall he wanted before he got here. So this is an incredibly intriguing final we've had so far. I did think at one point it was going to get rather dull, just Kurzweil's off in the distance once Balestrian in the state. But absolutely, with the different pit stop strategies, both with tyre and with fuel. So Balestrian now has a lead as I wait for it to tick through with Kurzweil. His lead's massive, his lead's eight seconds. So when he stops for fuel in a second, he'll still be in the lead unless he stops for fuel and tyres. So Balestri's next stop is key. If it's a fuel and tyre stop, he's going to come out behind Kurzweil. If it's a fuel only stop, he'll probably stay in the lead. Shoots now down beneath us. Any second now, he must be thinking about turning left. It's a long time since Kurzweil stopped. Watching various cars come in. Another tyre stop being done for one of the other machines. So Balestri's going to change tyres. It's going to be at the end of this run as he comes into the F returns and will sweep through the very difficult chicane. But at this point, he's out front and he's turning laps. And he's turning good times. He's going six tenths. The car in its current condition with the smaller tyres is absolutely as Balestri wants and He's making absolute hay compared to Kurzweil in this particular run. I mean, was that Kurzweil has just come back out of it. So he's about a lap ahead of Kurzweil. He's got to stop. So Kurzweil has come out directly ahead of Balestri. He's a stop ahead of him. And virtual lap. So from being behind, Balestri is on the track, admittedly with an empty fuel tank. But that is the man he was fighting. Now scored fourth, Simon Kurzweil. Best part of a lap behind. Now Kurzweil wants to avoid getting lapped for the simple reason it'll cost him another second. Problem for the three car of Mazzeo. Mazzeo made a mistake as Balestri comes in. Right, is it tyres? Fuel first, and there's a tyre stop. Now, how quickly can they do it? Is it, is it both? Is it just one side? No, it's both sides. I think it might be a, a left side only. And out he goes, and it's a quick stop. So, Balestri now, especially since Mazzeo made a mistake just prior to the stop. Where, and there's Kurt, and Kurt, which is literally right behind him. So, that pit stop for Balestri sees Kurzweil directly behind him in first and second. Raiola stopped as well. So we are now running at 20 minutes. And he's noticeable that getting used to the new big tyres is causing a problem for Balestri. And Kurzweil now, pretty much similar fuel strategies and stops and everything else, has a chance to try and get the lead back with 18 minutes to go. This is your first two. Your world champion, your European champion here at the 2019 European Championships in France, brought to you by RC Racing TV in association with Control, in association with Fred, with our sponsors, Infinity and A-Main Hobbies. And we have a battle royal for first and second between the two favourites of the event before we got here, Dario Balestri from Italy and Simon Kurzweil from Switzerland. They've been as far apart as almost a lap. They've both led. They've both not been leading as someone else has been ahead, but now they're together after 27 minutes of racing. Balestri now getting more used to the new tyres. Kurzweil, I think, still has a fuel disadvantage. which may see him needs to do an extra stop, and that must be a massive worry for him. But in pace terms now, they're right together. Third place is Carl Morello, fourth. Mazzeo, fifth. It's cross camp, but all lies in the first and the second as we run this middle part of the race, and suddenly Kurzweil looking to get past him because that's, he needs to find and get ahead and get a few seconds. I think he does have a fuel disadvantage still, and I believe and he might have to stop one more time. 
for Kersbert. At this point, just if you just visual gaps, I need to do time. Just slightly being gapped, I'd say, by Bolesh. She's getting a little bit further ahead. Last time round, yeah, it was two tenths. This time round, that's like a better run through for Kersbutch, and the gap was, yeah, it was nothing. It's 300 of a second faster for Balestri as he settles down onto these new tyres. The worrying thing for Kersbutch is that he's got to get past him. And it's not long before Kersbutch has to peel off left. Let's make our attention Kersbutch now, just with the second motion. I think he's going to go for a fuel stop soon. We can open up and see where Pelestra is. Made a little mistake on the last lap, Kersbert. He lost him 300 to the second. But despite many different permutations, we've ended up with what we kind of hoped and thought we'd get, which is the two best 1.8 IC drivers of the last five, so four or five years in Europe, finally going head to head for many a lap. And it's Kersbert, who is beginning to think about stretching the fuel. And just to give you an idea, in the last two laps, it's been 500 a second faster for Balestri and then 500 a second faster for Kersbridge. And they are dragging each other around to an always monumental performance you see when the top RC racers finally get to race each other. That's when you see the real talent. That's when you see the real skill of these cars. They are, they are tiptoeing and balancing these cars at speeds of anything up to 70, 75 miles an hour. And when they're going slow, they're doing 40. Bang, fire. <laughs> Yeah, and now Kersbich comes in. Cannot afford any mistakes. Down now. It it's quite a pedestrian drag. It's obviously, it, it, I would kind of panic and grab the car and pull it out, but obviously that kind of slow, steady movement is what the cars need. Perhaps it means that the fuel tanks don't get bubbled up and they can get the uh, fuel guns in better. So Kersbich now will stick down to third place behind Mariola. 15 minutes to go. Now what actually happens is how many, it's one lap and Belletti's not come in. I think it's going to be at least three. Two laps in Blesher's not coming. This is where it's going to get, start getting problematic because Kersbich, among everything else, is probably going to need to do an extra stop. And that may be the difference between winning the European Championship and coming second. Blesher goes underneath us again. That's three. And he comes in. So he's got three of advantages because Blesher comes in for fuel. Blesher is being fueled. He's down. I think Kersbich is going to take him. They can't get him. Kersbich does get it. So Kersbich gets the lead through the pit stops. The undercut worked. But now, three laps, which is a minute and a half. So it's 45 seconds. Is that going to be enough to eke out an extra stop? I'm not sure if it is. They have a short fill at the last one, which will speed things up. So Kersbich leads. Blesher second. Let's see if we can get it a bit wider and get both cars in. Going around the infinity curve. This battle royal will now be joined for another oh, 10 laps before Kersbert has to fill up again. Lester needs to get as close as he can. He needs to pressure Kersbert. Both of them now in the meat of their uh, second set of tyres. As they come around the A-man. The interesting thing is Rayola in third. He's not out of this. He's only uh, 1.7 seconds back. And it looks to me like Kersbert has got a little bit of extra pace. Yeah, he gained a tenth that time round just from the fact that the cars are getting slightly more distant. And definitely, that was a gain, yeah, three tenths per second. So Kersbich in this part of the track, you know, he just made a little minor error there, lost a couple of tenths, has the pace over Balestra. And this monumental ebb and flow. This is like a five-step tennis match, isn't it? You, one, you think well, someone's got it, and there's a tie break, and then someone double forts, and then something ebbs and flows. The ebb and flow on this race is fantastic. Monumental race so far. And we've still got another 13 minutes to go, and I can't call it, because even though Kersbich is leading, I think he's got a fuel disadvantage. Now, if Balestri knows he's got a fuel disadvantage, he, can, he, he needs to run safe. But I'm not sure Balestri himself knows what's going on. The team, they do have headsets. They can be in constant communication with their drivers. They can tell them what's going on, or they can guess what's going on. And you would think that Kurz, which might need to stop once more, if he's very unlucky, or it might just be that Balestri's a much shorter fill for the last stop. But that doesn't really speed the stuff up that much, because it's the, pick, it's the stopping, it's picking up and putting it down that's the main part of the six or seven seconds it costs to stop. So Kurz Butch comes around again. Now, after pulling away quite convincingly. Last couple of laps looks slightly better for Balestri, but I think it's just it's tense either way. Balestri definitely looks close to this lap. He's had a, a good run out of the hairpin, and now he fires up the straight. He was much, yeah, did only a quarter of a second. A quarter of a second when you're only 
you know, half a second ahead is a massive amount. As they come through the chicane again into the Infinity Hairpin, the shepherd of Simon Kirschbert and the Infinity Chassis of Dario Balestri. So this has been a good few laps for Balestri. He's come back into it again. So he's now making this lead virtually nothing. When Kirschbert will pull in, Kirschbert will pull in. When he pulls in, Balestri will do four laps before he pulls in. And we then have to try and work out if that means he can skip a stop. And if he can, oh, ah, now, little minor error there. And it's on those minor errors, and it's actually on the in lap for Kurzbuch. Kurzbuch, take the field with Kurzbuch. Up, down. He's now got four laps to go as fast, but now he did have a decent lead there, though, thanks to the mistake that Balestra made. But he still dropped down to third. He'll drop down behind... Uh, Riola, I think. I think Riola's taking through himself just now, so he might not drop behind Riola. Nope, stay second. So first and second, they've got a big enough gap to stay first and second when they take fuel. So Kersbuch, that was lap one, should come out with a reasonable lead, but the key thing is, what at what time of the clock... Because Kersbuch needs to stop twice more. We know that. At what the clock does Balestri go in, and can he do by stopping once more? And I don't think he can. It's Kurt who gets out and hassled by someone from behind, which I think is the, uh, unless they're Maseo car, which you could do with that. No, that's it's Balestri. It's Balestri stopped already. So Balestri has either had an error or has stopped early. And perhaps, perhaps Balestri's decided that he can't save a stop and therefore has decided to go on to a, a more, a safer strategy of not running down. So I didn't see Balestri in the pits there, but he did do a 21.5, which is exactly what a pit stop would be. And so the first and second are back together again. Balestri not going four laps longer, just going two laps longer. Obviously, the battle to save the stop's not going to work. So now let's make this thing a bit more even, make it a bit more we're doing the same thing. And first and second are nailed together. And Balestri perhaps possibly thinks that what he wants to do is run two laps longer and try and get Kurzbach on the track. But uh, uh, by an undercut, an overcut, sorry. But at this point, they're right together. Plenty of traffic, first and second. Don't need to tell you the distance. So 35 minutes in, 10 to go. Kurzbuch and Balestri fighting tooth and nail for the European Championship 2019. Trying to score points prior to going to Fontana in California for the World Championships at the beginning of November. Balestri, world champion reigning at the moment. And of course, Kurzbuch is the reigning European champion for at least another 10 minutes. It might be a year in 10 minutes. So they are right together as we come down to nine minutes to go. And Balestre hassling and harrying. Third place, Man Riola. Oh, around the outside, thinking about it hard. So Riola is back three seconds, waiting for them both to hit each other very hard. So slightly better there after that attempt. He just kind of lost a bit of momentum. As Balestre switched up his pit stop strategy, decided to go on the same one as Kurzbuch, just to take away that... I mean, it means he will always he won't have any chance of running down with the low with the fuel. So he's always going to have plenty of fuel. He cut, oh, look at the inside for a bit sharper run, but you're not going to get the drive out of there. So these two drivers attempting to occupy the same piece of track, really, but uh, that's why Balestri, who's quicker at a couple of parts of the track, slower at a couple of parts of the track, that's why it's so difficult to get past. And he's really, really, basically, he's decided that possibly the Infinity Hairpin is where he has a chance by backing the car in. So in the car comes. So we're now with the last three now still trying to chase very, very hard into Simon Kersbuch. As they drive Uh, we've got seven minutes to go. Kurzbuch from Balestra. The occluding cloud comes over. Mm. 
just a few seconds ago. They're coming to the pit together. So this is the evening up stop. Right off the hot spot. So it's getting very, very close now. Pietsch. So Balestri now has a lead of one second from Kurzbuk through that uh, situation with the pit stops. And Balestri continues going on. But they are right together with just six minutes left. Leicester leads, Kurz, which is second. The gap now with six minutes to go is just point one point nine one second exactly, one point zero nine six. So Balestri looking particularly strong at the moment. The one car, and the four car, and the zero car, all going round, but it's looking particularly good. So. So five minutes to go. And Balestri leads. Kurzbach now, and needs to catch him up. He's about, there's a gap of about one second. As they carry on racing round. But Barry Aversi now looking at five minutes to go. We went to the absolute final last moments of this European Championship. Balestre has put in a magnificent performance over the course of the last few laps. But what he's trying to do most of all is win the European Championship. He's got a lead of one second from Simon Kurzbach. Kurzbach, who's like to that's gone down that time now. A tenth penny of it. Kurzbach comes into the corners. They sweep through the chicane for what will be one of the four and a half minutes to go. And then not much time left. They sweep through the chicane and now they dive back round and up the straight. So the back marker in the way and the back marker who is that that is the nine car in the way and that was the fourth place we can't realize they've lapped up the fourth Kurzbach now he's trying to get the inside of realize one two and three together can Kurzbach get past the other realize now and he's let him through and he does oh Kurzbach is oh, Kurzbach his last fuel stop can he make anything of it he's got three minutes to go stay with Kurzbach because he needs to make some time now. Kurzbach on the last fuel stop of the European Championship. Is it going to be possible for him to win the whole thing or not? There they go. Kurzbach has to wait to see how long it is before Balestri decides to pit. And the answer to that question is not very long because Balestri has pitted. So they have come out together. Balestri pits, they pitted, and this is the gap. This is the gap for the last three minutes of the European Championship final. Kurzbut is down by less than one second from Balestra. There's cars away. See if you can get the, the, the wide enough to get them both in, Ash. There is Balestra from Kurzbuch. There's three minute, two minutes and 40 seconds to go. They've been fighting the whole way through. Kurzbuch and Balestra fighting, 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 fighting. As they drive round 
Oh, it's so close. Oh, and they're looking very closely, and there's just so much traffic. And the car popped out of the way, but Balestra, where is, is it just ahead? There's so many white cars is the other problem. You kind of lose track of which white car is which white car. And Balestra looking left and right and trying to get past. And up the inside now goes Kurt, but Kurt and Balestra right together. We're down to two minutes to go, and the cars are as close as they can possibly have 45 minutes. They can, now they've done the traffic. That's got to be a massive relief for Balestra. Balestra now looking to see what he can do. Left, right through the chicane, gained slightly on Kurz, but Kurz was going to try something special. Now they both had their last stop. They've just got to make one minute 40 seconds. It's about six laps. Who will win? No one knows as Balestra now comes round with Kurzbutch. Kurzbutch. Oh, it's so close, but he can't gain that lap. That's definitely a gain for Balestra. He looks like he's going to get it. He's got a minute and 23, but Kurzbach will never give up. The gap that time went up by three tenths of a second. Can Kurzbach, or has his car slightly gone off? Balestra, let's just um, move a little bit less it. So Balestra now up these, but this time a better lap, a better lap for um, Kurzbach means he's brought it back down to six tenths a minute to go. They're on the same frame, in the same frame for the last 20 minutes. It's a remarkable event. Who was going to win this one? Down they come, and round they go, and Kurzbach push, push, push. But he's got himself to catch up seven tenths of a second. He's got three laps to do it. He'll listen two more. Oh, a bit of oversteer for Kurzbach. And you can see the gap went up very slightly. Balestri just sticking the car on the island, on the straight. It's down for Kurzbach. Going, can he do it? He's going three monumental laps. It might only be two monumental laps, actually. It looks like it might fail Balestri. He may just need to do this lap and one more. 24, 23. Oh, it's very, very close. It's, they're going to cross in about 18. It's, it's, it's quite close, but I think Kurzbach may get caught. It may be that Balestri will have a lap of honour. They're right together, but they've just stretched enough, and Balestri seems to have just enough of a breathing room, just enough of space. The extra time he took and out of Kurzbrich during the pit stops, and they cross over now as Kurzbrich being caught by, yes, Kurzbrich being caught, your European champion. Let's focus on Balestri because he's got a lap of honor. Kurzbrich being caught by the time. Your European champion will be Dario Balestri. A fantastic result. He had a problem in the pit stop with flame out. He had an accident. He's fought back, different runs, and a fantastic performance by Balestri. Let's see him on the rostrum. What a fantastic performance. Dario Balestri, what a victory. Great driving by the finish driver. Many commiserations to um, Simon Kurz, but Gilles Grosskamp got a podium in the end. Fantastic. Kurzweil got a podium. Rayola was fourth. Domp was fifth. Gruber was sixth. Peach was seventh. Mazzeo was eighth. Griner was ninth. And Tironi was tenth. What a fantastic race. That was amazing.